Now we are going to learn about the step by step explanation of PCA. So already I have shown you all the five steps necessary. But before really jumping and discussing about what actually is happening in the hood. Now just to make sure uh, we'll, we won't go much deep into the maths part of PCA. We'll have a overlook. We already had an overlook how PCA works. I'll just tell you about the steps, how things go in the back end part. Okay, this time we won't go much deep into the maths. So before just going into the steps, uh, you should be knowing about few things which are quite necessary. Okay, a uh, few terms which are very necessary. One is dimension. We have already heard about dimension. What we mean by dimension? Uh, that is the number of feature. Then correlation. Uh, initially in the course we have talked about correlation that is how uh, how strongly two variables are related to each other that is if one decreases the other increases or the other decreases the one increases okay something like this okay we have different kinds of correlation we have looked into pearson correlation before then orthogonal orthogonal is nothing but in a hyperspace in a hyperspace uh, uh, the variables are perpendicular okay so they are perpendicular in the hyperspace to each other so that's why they don't have a correlation okay hence the correlation between those variables which are orthogonal are zero then we have the eigenvectors okay uh, let me give you a small description about eigenvectors if we have a square matrix okay, square matrix m and a non-zero vector v okay uh, then uh, v will be the eigenvector and a will be the eigenvalues okay i know i won't be making much sense now but once we jump into the steps it uh, will make more things okay now let's look into uh, the steps first of all uh, step one is standardization so before that what we are going to do we are going to take that input data set uh, divide it into two sub parts that is x and y x is for the training and again y is for the validation set the next uh, thing that we are going to do is we are going to represent the data in a following in a structure that is we represent our data set into a structure such as we will represent the two dimensional matrix we will represent the two dimensional matrix of independent variable x where each row okay, each and every row uh, corresponds to the data item okay. we have these rows these are the data items oops we have these rows which corresponds to the data items okay and the columns refers to the number of features so we will represent all of these data into this uh, uh, and dimensional and number of dimension uh, and dimensional matrix okay that's the data uh, we will represent the data in a structure then comes the standardization part in this step what we are going to do is we will standardize our data set uh, such as in a particular column the feature with uh, the feature which will be having high variance are more important compared to the feature with low variance right we have already looked into the importance of variance in our data set uh, while discussing about uh, an overview about pca if the importance of feature is independent of the variance of the feature then we will divide each data item to the standard deviation of the column okay each data item with the standard deviation of that specific column or that specific feature and then we will name that matrix as z okay this matrix that we had okay this structure okay, this structure that we had this is nothing but a matrix okay this is a matrix and we will standardize it after standardizing it we will name this matrix as z okay then comes the step 2 that is the covariance matrix and computation part what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the covariance of a z we are going to calculate the covariance of z we will take the matrix z and will transpose it after transposing we are going to multiply it by z so we have t uh, z okay uh, okay so this gives me the cov uh, covariance matrix so let me uh, break it out so how to find the covariance matrix so we will, are going to find the covariance of z so we are going to transpose z and multiply with uh, and multiply it by z the output will be the covariance matrix z the next it 
next uh, thing that we are going to uh, find out is compute the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix to identify the principal components remember we have to find uh, the main objective for us is to find the principal components okay which will actually uh, help us change our dimensions right so what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for the resultant covariance meet uh, resultant covariance matrix z yeah. for this matrix we are going to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors eigenvectors or uh, the covariance matrix are the direction of the axis remember when we were actually plotting it out we had actually looked into how much directional the direction of uh, your axis is so much important right the direction of axis uh, actually helps us find out the proper uh, axis which will have the maximum variance right which will lose the least information so eigenvectors or the covariance matrix are the direction of the axis with high information okay and we actually need uh, uh, the axis which has uh, eventually has the highest uh, information so that's why eigenvectors are necessary and the coefficient that are uh, assigned to this matrix okay the coefficient as assigned to these vectors and eigenvectors are defined as eigenvalues as i've told you av we were looking at it when we were discussing about av uh, eigenvectors so v is the eigenvector and a are the eigenvalues a is nothing but the coefficient of these vectors okay and these vectors are nothing but the covariance matrix okay which is actually the direction of our axis okay all the time the next thing is our feature vector we are getting our feature vector right we are getting our feature vector and we are going to recast the data last step will be recast the data along with the principal component axis so we are going to calculate the new features or the principal components from the eigenvectors and eigenvalues the new feature has uh, set has occurred so we will decide here what to keep and what to remove this will actually help us to diminish the data and uh, get the pc uh, principal components that we need it means we only keep the relevant or important features in the new data set and, and the unimportant features are actually removed out okay so that's uh, that's the end thing we recast the data along with the principal components we keep the data that is really necessary and remove out the unimportant data that's how we get the principal components and that's the various uh, steps of pca I know we haven't gone to the much of the deeper maths part, but just to have an overview, this should be enough for us to get our hands dirty on the lab section. And eventually, if you have not still got the ideal hold on PCA, once we start with the lab part, I'm pretty sure that it will make more and more sense to you. Okay. Uh, now let's look into the previous image that uh, we had actually seen in the uh, initial videos of PCA. So now I think it will make more and more sense. What we are doing for we are projecting all these data points to this axis and we have to find the best axis which is having the uh, most variance or which is losing the least information. So this pink line if we join it, it gives me the PC1. Okay, it gives me PC1. Similarly, uh, in the different axis, if we see, if this is the PC1, PC2 will be somewhere over here. Okay, PC2 will be in somewhere over here. Right, and as I have already told you that uh, there will be a small trade-off in this. That is, uh, the importance of each component decreases when going to 1 to N. Okay, which means the PC1, that that is the first principal component has the most importance and the uh, nth PC uh, principal component will have the least importance. So if I just uh, got a chance to plot it out, let's say PC1 and PC2 and we plot out the uh, actually the project uh, the values. Okay, then we will get for PC1 we are going to get something of a highly variated data. Okay, something like this which is very much variated somewhere in the middle we will be having more points but in pc2 if you see if we project out we will have most of the points somewhere over here which is 
not variated and most of the information is lost okay i hope i'm making more and more sense now and uh, let's jump into the lab section which uh, will actually get you uh, get your expertise on pcl so let's jump into our next video where we'll start out with the lab part.